Talk about your big steps backwards. What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the fourth record by American rock band Cage the Elephant. It's called Tell Me I'm Pretty. I pre-ordered it a while back and it actually came out the day after my birthday, December 18th. Huge fan of the band's last record, Melophobia. In fact, I've enjoyed all three of their albums up to this point. Some of them were a little bit more spotty. They all had their strengths and weaknesses, though, but I thought Melophobia had very few in the weakness department. It was a very strong record lyrically. Musically, they seemed like they were in the zone. A lot of the songs came through kind of a haze, but at the same time, I could tell that they were on a very creative streak. And I thought that they would continue that stride with a new record. Things were looking up. In fact, I thought they had improved every single record. I think that the debut self-titled record was a little bit single-heavy. In fact, some of those are my favorite songs from the band still to this day, but very single-heavy. The second time around, they worked on fleshing out the sound of a full record and lured me in that way. And with Melophobia, it just felt like they were continuing that success and building on their strengths. Meanwhile, with this new record, Tell Me I'm Pretty, Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys hopped on the production and things take a giant leap backwards. That's right, we're talking muddy production, mundane lyrics, and a style that really just feels like it's trying to fit it all in one little cup. It's like they had all of these influences from the 60s and 70s that they wanted to use and then just kept jamming them down our throats. I can't say that there aren't songs that I'm enjoying here, but there are a lot of boring moments, and I can't entirely fault the band for this. I mean, Matt Schultz does a great job on his vocals, what he does with them at least. I just felt like they tried to keep it, like I was saying, in this kind of nostalgic zone, and they didn't break away from that, and Dan of the Black Keys producing did not help them achieve what they really needed to get if they were going to push that sound off and make it work. I don't want to throw around the term disingenuous lightly, but I do feel like a lot of these songs just aren't that credible. You've got a lot of titles like Sweetie Little Jean, and it feels like they're trying to craft up a story that could have come from the 1960s or a different decade from times past, and it doesn't fit with what Cage the Elephant have been about in the past. I mean, yes, they have had their songs that definitely have their influences. I mean, hell, a lot of the songs on their last record, Melophobia, reminded me of the Beatles, and I'm definitely hearing that come through again. That's a track that rubbed me the wrong way with those influences, but there's times when it definitely does work. Cry Baby kicks off this record and is easily the best song on the LP. It's just a vibrant, and shimmering tune. It's just dipped in sunshine and you sing along to the chorus and it's yes, Cage the Elephant achieving what they wanted to do with their sound and I could embrace an entire record of songs that kind of played to those strengths but I don't see those popping up often enough. Crybaby really takes those 60s sounds, those vocal harmonies, the guitars, everything like that. There's a little bit of fuzz in there, a little bit of like a, almost surf rock type vibe, and I'm really digging it. I can sink my teeth into it, and I think it's a fantastic song. I love everything from the intro to the way that the song kind of fades out and takes a different form in its final stage. There's plenty of moments from other songs that I kind of like but don't totally get on board with. I feel like Too Late to Say Goodbye starts off with a kind of dark and moody vibe vibe that I'm kind of digging, but then these clicking drums and then just some vocals that get a little bit eh, grating, if you will, over time, just don't do it for me. In fact, I would say that there's only two songs on this LP that I really, truly love. Cry Baby being one of those, and one of the pre-release singles, Trouble, that just really won me over, especially with repeated listens. Now, I thought the lead single, Mess Around, was a huge disappointment. In fact, it almost made my worst songs of 2015 list just because of how disappointed I am in it. It feels like a Black Keys B-side to me. Mess Around is nothing special. In fact, the opening vocals on there, the ah, it feels like something that they would totally throw on a Black Keys track, and obviously that just shows how involved Dan Auerbach actually was. But Trouble moved away from that. I think things got a little bit moodier. I'm loving the light guitar and the well-thought-out and well-penned lyrics that come across on this track. I'm not going to sit here and call it one of the band's best songs, because that's just not the case, but I do really 
really think that this is a pretty fantastic track, especially for 2015 Cage the Elephant. I feel like towards the end of this record, things just start to get cheesy and fall apart. I mean, there's tracks like Punching Bag that talk about this girl who's not taking any crap anymore, it seems like. She's throwing punches back at this guy who's given it to her all these years because he dishes it out, but he can't quite take it. It's just a silly little tune, and what gets even worse than that is cold 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 in fact this feels like something that might have been written by like a 16 year old who looked at a 60s song and then just said yeah i want to recreate that vibe and it just feels like a painful nostalgia trip that i didn't ask for portuguese knife fight closes out this record and i think it brings up a problem that i've been seeing all throughout this lp tell me i'm pretty the problem is is that schultz doesn't feel that invested vocally i mean yes there are some songs that definitely bring across sentiment and emotion, but more often than not, it almost feels like he's phoning it in in a way, and I've seen him pour out energy and emotion into tracks in the past. Just look at moments like In One Ear, and It's Just Forever with Alison Mosshart of The Dead Weather. I know that this dude's got it in him, and it's just hard to sit here and listen to an LP that feels stale in a lot of ways. Overall, I don't think I'm going to be coming back to this album that often. I am kind of disappointed in myself for pre-ordering it. I don't normally do that. I usually wait and just end up streaming it a few times. If it's something that I really like, I'll then purchase it afterwards but this is one that, you know, Melophobia was so great for me that I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and I got shot in the ass this time. You win some, you lose some. I'm still a fan of the band. They just put out an LP that didn't hit the mark for me. Overall, I'm feeling a 2.5 for Tell Me I'm Pretty. If you've heard the latest album from rock band Cage the Elephant, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out all of my year-end videos. If you've somehow missed those, I'm doing the top 50 songs, the top 20 albums, the top 25 worst songs, etc. Definitely make sure you keep checking back all December long, I might have a surprise bonus list this year. We shall see. Thanks for smashing the like button, subscribing to the channel, because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. Other than that, I'll see you guys very soon, right here on ARTV.